What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of Warcast. We are a Southern California based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I'm Danny. I'm Rob. I'm Kyle. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, shoot. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> Gentlemen, first on the agenda shots. Shots. Oh, fuck. A little spicy? Why is it spicy? What? Holy crap. How you guys been? Rob, how you been doing this week? Rob, how you doing out there? Oh, good. Good. We just uh, previewing some of our new music. And uh, there was there was a major thing wrong with it. Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Danny told you guys. Yeah, but, I already heard the uh, fix. So that's cool. Oh, it was like... Oh my God! How did this? How does it get this far? You know, it's like, funny. Oh, wow. It's it's funny because I was literally just telling Danny. I was like, I was just driving down here listening to it, and I realized what, it, what that it was there, and I was like, Oh, I guess we kept it in. Oh. And then Danny's like, Hey, so we're taking this out. <laughs> I was like, oh, Okay. <laughs> I I was like, How did that get back in? I thought we deleted all of them. Yeah, I don't know. Not. Yeah, that's funny. All right. But, uh, but yeah, other than that, anyway, other than that, I'm doing great. Yeah. What about you, Danny? I'm doing good. Like you said, I think, uh, you know, my, my last few days have been dealing with, uh, the new mix of the little karma, the new song. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been dealing with that and it's good. Uh, had an opportunity to, uh, work on some new stuff a little bit here and there. And, uh, Mm -hmm. Do a couple things, so you know. And me and Rob have been bouncing ideas back and forth about a few things, and then uh, you know we're kind of in the beginning stages of kind of putting something together that's going to be pretty cool. So yeah, been busy. You know. Yeah. What about you, Josh? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Kyle. You mean Kyle? Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Kyle. Oh, well, if that's your real name. Part. I'm sorry. Um, it's inside joke. Um, I, if I'm honest, uh, I haven't done anything music wise for like a week straight because we've been celebrating my daughter's birthday. So we went to Universal again over this past weekend. So I went on 11 rides in one day that I'm just, I'm, I'm all universaled out. I'm tired of it. And like, I have Kyle on the brain from the minions ride. So nice. Gotcha. Yeah. But I'm doing good. Yeah, man, that's dope. Yeah, I've been all right. Uh, we released a single last week, gentlemen. Uh, Remain Untamed, Nocturnal Mix, being very, very well received. People really like it. I got a lot of comments, actually, on TikTok of people asking for other songs. People saying, like, Reach, and somebody said all of them. <laughs> just like, you know, just a bunch of people saying that they really like that we did something like this because they feel that it's something that not many bands do anymore. So... And I thought what, that was kind remixing of remixing cool. or redoing their songs or what? Huh? Like just redoing them? Or? Yeah, like doing like different mixes of it and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I guess. So. Well, Danny and I were uh, having a little conversation, and uh, we thought it'd be funny as if we took all of our songs and read them lounge style. <laughs> <laughs> Call it the Lounge Days of War. In the lounge days of war. <laughs> lounge days of war, bro. And, and then instead of a little gear, it would be piano keys with the anarchy symbol. Welcome to the shit show. You know, like, oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, I am officially in so long as Danny does the vocals. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get to play the Hammond organ. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. So we released a single. You guys, thank you so much as always for all sharing it and liking it and listening to it and giving the feedback. And you're not going to have to wait very much longer for the next one. We got another one dropping. I've, so long as everything lines up. July 11th. Free Slurpee Day. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Little car. Little karma. We'll, be well, we'll have an answer for that. I think in a few days. Yeah, for sure. Either way, it will be next month. We just we'll we'll find what day. So, for comedic reasons, we chose the eleventh. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I think it's still on point. I think it's still it'll rest. Like yeah. it's gonna hit that no matter what. Yeah. So Rob, what is it you wanted to talk about today, man? 
Uh, today, let's talk about, well, let's start off with moments that made us proud to be a musician. Um, this could be a show you've played that was phenomenal. This could be an act you got to open up for or jam with, or maybe there was somebody in the crowd of significance to you. Um, just, just whatever made you feel proud to be a musician. For sure. Part of your crowd. Yeah. Uh, do you want to, want to go first? Sure. Go for it. Um, for me, there was a point, um, I'm a huge fan of the band Snot, not, not the rapper, but the dollar sign N-O-T, but the, uh, punk rock alt metal band from Santa Barbara in the nineties. Um, the singer ended up passing away in 98 in a car crash. And so then uh, a couple of years passed, the band got back together and they were trying out singers. And luckily I got to meet the members of the band. Uh, unfortunately it was after the singer passed. Um, but talking with Mikey, the guitar player, he's like, Hey, we're, we're going to get the band back together. You want to try out? And I was like, fuck yeah. And everyone who knew me knows I'm a huge fan of snot. And that was a big opportunity. Uh, unfortunately, they picked the singer before my tryout date, so they shut me down and just said, hey, you know, thank you. Uh, really bummed out, burnt. Uh, I was like, like, damn, that sucks. A couple weeks go by and they're like, hey, we want you guys to open up for our debut show. So nice. getting, to, getting to open up for them and a couple other bands who were defunct at the time and got back together because Snot was doing shows again, it was Holy hell, that was a surreal moment. <clears throat> That's awesome. On my birthday, nonetheless, too. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it was like... Okay, I have, I have a question for you, Rob. Okay. Involving the snot story. I know you were going to try out for them. Had Have you ever actually had a jam session with any of the guys from snot, whether they were nope. in the band at the time? Nope. No, um, I've been to the recording studio where they've done stuff. Uh, Mikey's invited me over, and I went over and hung out with him, and just talking, shooting the shit, having a couple of drinks, and uh, he was telling me stories about snot that you know never made surface, and I just was all ears, sat there and just listened and let him jam. Hey, listen to this riff, and it's like. Oh, fuck yeah like he picking out songs that he's playing oh you know this song i'm like i know all your songs like huge okay. fan okay so. um i got a story for you then real quick to add to that right. um, let's hear it. i i've actually jammed with tumor really i don't think i i don't think i ever told you that um it involves a project i was in before with Manny, who we know, mm -hmm. and um, another guy who you possibly know Brandon. named Brandon, who was a singer of my previous bands. Hmm. Um, Tumor was going to try out to play bass for us uh, and was going to fill in for a couple shows. And he actually came to our lockout and jammed with us twice, but was totally honest and was like, yeah, it's cool, but it's not my thing. You guys aren't what I'm into. So shut us down real quick. Damn. But really, really cool dude. Really, really cool dude. Like to me, I I was I don't want to say starstruck, but I was nervous as shit, and it affected my playing. Oh. But at that time, I hadn't like played as many shows, and it was more of okay, this is a dude who does it for a living, and he's actually here in our own little rehearsal spot in Covina. And it's like, wow, okay, this dude does stages that I could only dream about, and he's going to watch me play drums. And like, oh, okay, we'll come up with this beat, and I just fucking got shut down. It's like, I was just embarrassed. Ooh. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> that band has, <laughs> has, does that to people. <laughs> like, just to watch him play was impressive. And he's like, oh, yeah, I know. I'll, okay, you guys play this riff like this, so what if we add this to it? And I was like, instantly, you made the song better. <clears throat> but I can't. Yeah. And then he's like, uh, this, this isn't what I'm into. I'm out. And you're like, but that was so yeah. good. 
It was so good. It, it was, was because it was because of Brandon, though. Yeah, because Brandon was going to try out for Snot too. So it was kind of a well. Let me come see what you're working with, and he was just like, "Yeah, two jam session." It was like, "Yeah, keep 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 working at it," but I'm not going to waste my time with you guys. Damn, um, that sucks. I have one story when it comes to like <clears throat> trying out for other bands that were already established and stuff like that. So, um. The current band, don't night, say the current band right now, Night Versions. Pool. What was time? Said, don't say Drowning Pool. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the band currently uh, right now known as Night Versus. They just released a song with Brandon Boyd. They're actually opening up for tour, uh, for tour right now. Um, I've known those guys since I started doing music. Back in No One's Mercy, they were playing uh, uh, shows that at the time they were known as the Sound Archives. <clears throat> And their singer had left the band. And I, they, the guitar player actually hit me up and asked me if I wanted to try out. And I, I did like some vocals over a track. Um, I'm sure it's still somewhere in an archive somewhere, but that was pretty cool. I mean, even though I didn't get picked and it was, you know, I got pretty bummed out about that. I was like, ah, man, you know, but <clears throat> yeah, those so guys are in a better band. band. Yeah. <laughs> You know, to be honest, dude, like like Josh was saying, how like it, you know, it was back then he hadn't played as many shows, and it got you know into his head with the, you know, he, there's a guy that does it for a living type thing. Like I, to me, at that time, the sound archives were just on another level. They they they're so talented, all three of them. They're still it's the same three members that are still in Night Versus right now. Um, but I just felt like I was you know a little out of my league when I was doing it, and I just Too wasn't. As, yeah, I was just too green, dude. It was just still the very beginning stages of me doing music. So, yeah. Tell you. Danny, tell him that time you tried out for Metallica. Go, dude. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, <laughs> I would story, say... Danny, stick I, to it. <laughs> I would say just, my, oh. my big one, several years ago, uh, the band I was in, we, we got played on the radio. It was the first time I ever heard my music on the radio. So it was kind of one of those moments that was, was kind of big for me nowadays. It's, I think it's that my kids know all the songs. So, yeah. Yeah. To That's which cool. artist? What's that? To which artist? Uh, which artist was the one that... Slipknot songs or what? They, they know all the corn songs. Oh, very good. They, they know, they know all of our songs, the last days of war. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. That's unfortunate. You got to hear that shit all the time now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're so fucking fake. Hey, You're so fucking fake. Really quick, is, is, Danny, is Danny moving around for you guys? Because he's frozen on my end. Oh, yeah, no, he's, he's moving. He's fucking with you. <laughs> okay. All right, just making sure. Then it'll be fine. Yeah. Don't do that, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, then... Uh, just the I think kids, we kind of drifted huh? off into a different going... conversation back into what we were talking about, but uh, were you done, Rob, about your moments? Oh, I'm being, done. Like, your, Josh, your do moments? you have another incident, maybe something that you were proud of as opposed to feeling more embarrassed? Sure. And rather than say a moment of when I was on stage of Proud to be a Musician, I'll switch it up and go with being a fellow musician watching my own child be on stage and perform and play an instrument that I as well play and him do the same thing I do and somewhat kind of enjoy it. Like he still has that nervous face when he plays drums. He's not excited yet. Mm -hmm. But to watch him and teach him and be a part of his jazz class every week and then see from rehearsal to performances, him kind of get into it and grow, that to me, I, I kind of felt proud being not just a dad, but a fellow musician and helping inspire other kids to want to keep wanting to play. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, I... I feel that Josh, because I, I remember the first time I saw Andrew do anything like he was in, he was in like show choir back in uh, high school. So the first time I saw him perform on stage like that, dude, I was like, damn near in tears, man. I was like, fuck, you know, just bringing back memories of like when I used to do that. And then just, you know, the fact that I got to be there for him because there wasn't, 
fucking, this isn't fucking sad time for Mark, but this, there wasn't many times where my father was in the crowd to see me perform. So, <laughs> you know, so just making sure that I've been no, there. I, for I, my... I... Go ahead. No, I, I got you. I understand. I know how that is too. So I feel you. That's why it's important for me to, if I can be there for their performance, I want to try and be, and if I'm not up on the stage, then at least I'm going to be in the crowd watching. Like His past performance was the first time I was not his own personal tech sitting behind him, but in between every song, he was staring at me through the crowd like, hey, did I do it right, Dad? Did I do it right? What the hell's going on? So it's like, no, nope. watching him grow Still up and get me. the confidence. Good. Yeah, I was like, hey, bro, you're not going to be as good as me. Let's just let's keep that rule there with something to strive for. Chopping away at him a little bit, you know, or he does really good and you just club him on the way to the bathroom or something like that. You take him out. Oh, darn. Right. I'll go get the guy real quick. So I guess I'll... <laughs> I'll tell you one. I'll tell you a story that uh, made me like I'm proud to be doing what I do, be a musician. Um, it was when I got to play with Orgy. Well, I would say one the first time I ever played the whiskey. Okay, and it was like because I mean now we say the whiskey and yeah we all go like that. Oh, you know, like I get, it, I get it. You know, but like when you first starting in music and you hear about like playing in Hollywood and playing at once one of the first venues that anybody ever says the whiskey. You know, and it's got, you know, just had so many famous names on that stage. So the first time I played that stage, I was kind of like, this is awesome. I'm doing it. Let's go. You know, like, and then uh, when I played with Orgy, the reason for that was is because it was a band that I listened to a lot when I was in high school. But uh, when we opened for them, my cousin just so happened to be their drummer. So uh it was just really cool to, I think I'm pretty sure it was the first No One's Mercy show that we played with Orgy. Me? No, you, that's not right. Your first show you played I with I think the first, play, the first whiskey show for sure. I think it was the first whiskey show for sure. Um, okay. I was thinking. Yeah, but it was the first, yeah, it was the first show at the whiskey. And it was just cool because the place was packed with family, man. They were all there for you know, me opening and my cousin closing the show and it was just an all out great night. It was it was awesome. That was fun. Whole family yeah. was there for real. Or... Yeah, exactly, dude. It was cool. Danny? Yeah. Did you get yours in already, bro? Did you get yours in already? I don't remember. Oh oh I'm hell a little yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, no, I got, no, it, no, I got no. it in there. Yeah, he did. Uh his kids knowing the songs. For sure. Yeah. All righty. Did anybody have any other stories to add to that? Danny, anything? Nothing? Josh? All right. Um, why? Why, what? Do you, what do you think? Band... Go ahead, Danny. No, I was saying, were you thinking something? You you act as if, like, there is, there's something I should say that I'm not saying. Yeah, he was all. No, man. <laughs> I, I know you've had a really venturous career as a musician and, and sound guy and doing all your... Oh, well... Yeah, but I mean, if I thought I thought we were speaking just just flat out like bands that I've been in, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I well, mean, no, I mean, just anything that made you proud to be like. Well, yeah, hey, I well, I mean, you know, this. music music took me on a whole career of being a sound engineer, and I've uh, you know I've I've been to other countries, I've been to other states, I've done different shows, I've done, you know, I've been in small little clubs. Like I remember being in a club in Detroit. I literally thought the uh, stage was going to collapse. And I've been I've been at Atlantis and the Bahamas doing a show. I've been in arenas, so I've been I've done it, you know. So, in that side of it, yeah, dude, I have I have all kinds of like really cool fucking things, you know. Like, there's been people I've met, you know. Um, I think we've talked about it on the podcast before. We were doing, I think it was a Soulfly show. It was towards the beginning of me working at, at House of Blues. I did security and. I, I had the opportunity to work security right outside of Max's green room. So talking to him and stuff that day, like, like I told you, man, like he uh, he handed me a Diet Coke and I never drank it because it was I wasn't going to. But then about 20 minutes later, I cracked it open and said, well, fuck it, you know, because I was thirsty. But, you know, like I've had I've had some situations that are pretty cool in music and, and stuff like that. But like I said, with me being a band, I think it was. First time I heard myself on any type of radio, and it was, I believe it was XM radio. It was on, uh, I don't know if it was like Octane or something like that, you know? Nice. Oh, yeah. Josh? Uh, um, 
if I was going to pick a band that I was excited to open for, it would be another whiskey show that I did with you, and I would have to pick Doyle. That was a fun show. Just because I am a Misfits fan from almost birth, I have American Psycho tattooed on my shoulder, so to actually open up for these dudes, and then to go on their tour bus and take him falafel after the show... It was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, that was a good time. Yeah. Uh, quick story about that night. The, fun, the one thing that I remember the most is we we're standing outside on the sidewalk and uh, we're talking to Alec and the singer from Doyle passes by. It's like Wolfman or something. I forget his name. Yeah, yeah that was his name. He, passed, dude, he, he comes like walking straight towards us and he just grabs Alec by the shoulder and like throws him to the side and just keeps walking straight to the door. And we're just like, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. We're like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> and he's a little dude too. Like he has short guy pissed off syndrome. But yeah, that's Alex Wolfman. There, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That's the one thing I remember is him throwing Alec like halfway down the block when he just was in his way. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. We got a few minutes left on this episode, uh, uh, Rob. What do you want to talk about next? Uh, let's also go into, I know, movies that we've, we've always talked <laughs> movies and previews and stuff coming out and, and all that. But nothing makes a good movie like a good soundtrack or score. And so uh, keeping it music related, I think we should go through and pick some of our favorite soundtracks and some of our favorite scores that kind of stuck with us and been like, oh man, I can listen to this album or that album front to end. Uh, Josh, you want to start it? Okay. Um, I got my answer for both. Uh, I'll start with the score. Okay. Score wise, I'm going to have to go with The Last Samurai. Nice. Oh. Just because I, I'm not a huge Hans Zimmer fan. But that score throughout that whole movie was just awesome from beginning to end. And I can listen to that and know exactly what scene it's at with that movie. And I'm into old samurai type stuff. Not to be racist, I married an Asian. <laughs> so it's like, it, it just fits with me that I I, I like that uh, last samurai. Yeah, that score. doesn't make you a samurai, but yeah, I get you. <laughs> I have my, I, I got a top knot. Like I got my <laughs> Hey, I picked my battles. I got the hair and the beard. I know where I stand. Oh, that's so funny, dude. <laughs> I know where I stand. And then uh, um, soundtrack wise, and then does for those of you who don't know, uh, the difference but, between a score and a soundtrack is soundtrack is more like a compilation of different artists put together for the movie, like a mixtape. And then the score is all composed by one artist or several artists, but it's just the instrumental for a movie. But sorry, go ahead. Your Thank favorite you. soundtrack. Thank you. I was going to ask if you wanted to clarify the two, you beat me to it. Um, favorite soundtrack. I'm sorry if I take it from you. Uh, straight up. Lynn Straight. Right. That's probably my favorite. I mean, it's a good compilation, just, but is it a soundtrack? Well, that's what I'll say. Does that count? Would you consider that as a soundtrack? Because it would that be the soundtrack to not really I mean, his life? Would that count as a soundtrack or no? Because otherwise, I'm going with Freddy versus Jason. That was a great one. That's a fucking great one. God was damn it. it wasn't Spine Shank? Didn't Spine Shank have a song on that? Uh huh. That was a good I'm one. Both. <laughs> I'm both. That's crazy. That was like all Roadrunner, so, too. It was a good yeah, album. Yes. God. Exactly. So if I have to, then I'm taking Freddy versus Jason. Damn nice. it. That's a great one. I, I, <laughs> spit one. That. Uh, hey, you told me to go first. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a good thing, too, because that's a good album. I'll have to go back and listen to that yeah. one again. You want, me, you want me to go yeah, next? That's a good one. Go ahead. Go for All it. All right, cool. Um, so distinguishing the difference of the two, the score being just like the music in the movie for certain scenes and stuff, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. So yeah. So then it's yeah. definitely for me, it's uh, both Kill Bills. That that those those movies have great scores, man. There's the, there's so many scenes that are so iconic with just different, you know, 
things playing there. I love I love those two movies. Soundtrack wise, it would probably be. Um, I love the soundtrack to. Uh, there's a movie called Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. That's a good. That's a good soundtrack. And then uh, I would say probably Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. That's a good. That's a good one too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're big uh, Michael Sarah fan, huh? Yes, I am. <laughs> I didn't even realize he was in both movies till right now. That's funny. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> same character. Yeah, it, well, he's the same character in everything, dude. He's, he's just Michael Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. This is the end. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> that's, true. that's a great movie. That's a great one. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, Danny? Or Danny, go ahead. You want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, soundtrack. I'm, I would, there's two that I'm thinking of and I'm going to, I'm going to leave. I'm just only going to say one because okay, I, I kind of have a runner up, but I'm going to say queen of the damned. <laughs> well, I almost said that dude. I almost said queen of the damned. Yeah. All right. What was your runner up? John wick. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Okay. The score or the soundtrack? Well, I would uh, the soundtrack for John Wick. Okay. Uh, movie movie score, I would probably go Interstellar, and that's a uh, Hans Zimmer. So Another Hans Zimmer. Yeah. We got two for Hans Zimmer now. I figured oh. we would get a few because there's also Dark Knight's amazing too. Oh, mm-hmm. that one. Dark Knight. It's, it's Dude, yeah, I got a lot, man. I could keep going. Like, I could just yeah. go down a list. I mean, uh, you know, anything that's basically anything Hans Zimmer, Danny Elfman, uh, Taylor yeah. Bates, just the list. Of, like, yeah, there's, yeah. Go ahead, I, Rob. I think I might have just screwed you right there, Rob. So <laughs> please proceed. Danny would have said all of them. Danny said all of them, dude. He said <laughs> all of it. All John of them. Williams, you know, just <laughs> keep going, you know? Well, that was great, up. cool. <laughs> so, what do you got, uh, Rob? <laughs> that's who I got. Is I got uh, for score. I'm gonna go with the Dust Brothers on Fight Club. Nice. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I, I love the arrangement of that whole album from beginning to end, where uh, one song will start and then it morphs into another song from another different part of the movie, like, and it's all different scenes. So then, when you listen to the soundtrack. It's like the the movie gets kind of Tarantinoed in your head because it jumps from scene to scene to scene to scene, really well put together. Um, and then also when I was in college, uh, they they had um, the Dust Brothers come in and give a lecture to our class. Clown College. And so, and so it was it was a real honor to get to actually meet them and shake their hands and say, dude, you guys fucking killed it on this album and uh, got my copy signed and everything like that, too. So nice. Um, that soundtrack means a lot. And also, it's the only CD in my car that just stays in the player. Huh. Um, as far as soundtrack goes, um, there was a movie that came out. I, I don't even think it, it hit select theaters, but it was called Strangeland. Yep. Yep. I remember that. See? I don't, that's it a was good D. One. Snyder. I don't, film. I don't know that movie. D. Is, Snyder yeah. film. Um, that is actually where I first heard Snot. Oh. Was on that yeah. album. Nice. That's where I first heard System of a Down. It, <clears throat> oh, I yeah. think that might have been the first place I heard Snot as well. Mm hmm. And then, I, but it also had other bangers on there, you know, you, like System of a Down, uh, Head PE, Anthrax, Head PE, like just everyone was on that album. It was like, oh. And then they ended up Cold doing chamber. like a Strain Plan tour, and Soul Fly was on it. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Full Chamber, yeah. That was I can't album. believe that we, I can't believe that we went round robin on scores and nobody said Star Wars. Well, this I did say John, said John Williams. Williams. Oh, okay. <laughs> that covers Indiana Jones. Yeah. That's crazy. I do have a runner up for a score, though. What you got? Mike Patton for Crank. Ooh. That was a good one, too. Yeah. I totally forgot uh, about, about it, but yeah, when you were uh, mentioning Fight Club. Another good soundtrack or score, sorry, 
is uh, Mike Shinoda for The Raid, Redemption. You guys heard that one? I have not. Uh, no. I got to check that one oh. out. Oh, okay. my God. And then uh, they do, like, the closing credit song he does with uh, Chino from the Deftones. Oh. song called Razor's Out. Just, woo. Fucking kill I think it. I, I think I missed, I completely missed that one. I got to check this out. Have you not seen the movie? Heard of the movie? No. I don't think I have it's like a whole apartment complex uh, being run by a drug lord, and he's like on the top level. And so they, the, these police raid the building, and they got to go up the floors, and they're getting attacked by different bosses each floor or whatever. It's Act a trip. Out the first nine minutes, dude. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Just read the subtitles. It's good. It's all there. <laughs> This is so good. This is so good. You gotta watch oh, that this. Good. If you do not watch this podcast, I encourage you to go find it on a video so you can see what Rob just did. <laughs> it's probably if you exactly. It, go find the video. I mean, you know, you can you can read the synopsis or just watch that little clip and yeah. <laughs> That's a great movie. That's good. All right, guys. You got anything else to say before we wrap this up? Uh, July eleventh. July 11th. I like that. There we go. July 11th, we might possibly, probably, more than likely, will be dropping a single. Uh, <laughs> you guys, this has been the last days of war, guys. We are Southern California based band, the last days of war. You guys check us out on everything, all streaming platforms. You've got links and bios that you can click and you can support my merch. Talk to you guys later. We're out. Mm-hmm.